Hi, welcome to week two of Summer Reading. This week's theme is Fun and Games. I'm Kayla from the LaPorte Library where I manage the adult services. And I'm Elizabeth. I'm the Young Adult Program Librarian at the Spring Branch Memorial Library. Make sure you sign up for Summer Reading by going to hcpl.net or by downloading the Beanstack app. You can log your books and earn prizes. And if you want more information about summer reading, go to www.hcpl.net and look for that summer reading button. There you'll find a one-stop shop website where you can find information on all kinds of things like our virtual programs. And speaking of programs, this week we have a special show by Astro's Mascot Orbit. This week, Thursday at 2 o'clock. You can also check out our live stream program this Friday at 10 a.m. through Arts Alive called Fairy Tale Fun. And this week's summer reading challenge is Once Upon a Time Fairy Tale Retelling. So we have some great recommendations for you for this reading challenge. Our first recommendation is Rapunzel's Revenge by Shannon and Dean Hill, illustrated by Nathan Hill. No relation. So this book is a great graphic novel for kids. This features Rapunzel as you've never seen her before, as an outlaw in the wild, wild west. So join Rapunzel and her lasso hair on this adventure of a book filled with danger, comedy, and magic. The whole book has full color illustrations, beautifully done by Nathan Hale, who also made the popular series Nathan Hale's Hazardous Tales. So if you like those books, you're going to love this one. Cinder is the first book in the Lunar Chronicle series by Marissa Meyer, and this series reimagines well-known fairy tales as a futuristic sci-fi and intertwines the stories to create something new and exciting. This truly is Cinderella as you have never seen it before. It features a diverse cast of characters and strong female heroines, and their futuristic world isn't so different from ours. They're even struggling with a mysterious pandemic. Ooh, that sounds interesting. I've always wanted to read that one. Our next book is The Goose Girl by Shannon Hill. So this is the same author as Rapunzel's Revenge, but it's a very different kind of book. This one is a beautiful lyrical retelling for teens of the Grimm's brother fairy tale, The Goose Girl, which is a fairy tale not many people know of. This book follows the princess Annie Dory Caladra Taliana Isley, or Annie for short, as she journeys to a foreign country to marry a prince. Along the way, though, her lady-in-waiting mutinies, and Annie has to find a way to regain her throne using just her wits, her newfound friends, and maybe even some previously undiscovered magical powers. I loved that series, and the audiobooks were really good, too. Geekarella is the first book in the Once Upon a Con series by Ashley Poston, and this series reimagines fairy tales as contemporary romances set in and around a popular fan convention, and it features a diverse cast of characters. This is a must-read rom-com for readers that like to geek out over their favorite books, movies, and stars, and it features plenty of references to your favorite fandoms. Fun. This next book is a great recommendation if you liked Rapunzel's Revenge. So this one is Calamity Jack. It's also written by Shannon and Dean Hale and illustrated by Nathan Hale. So this is a great graphic novel for kids, and it's kind of a standalone sequel set in the world of Rapunzel's Revenge. In this book, though, we follow Jack, of Beanstalk fame, as he goes to a city that has a steampunk meets Newsies vibe. There, Jack must battle the ogreish businessman who runs that city. This book is also filled with full-color, beautiful illustrations done by Nathan Hale that will keep you in awe as you read through this adventure of a book. I love Shannon Hale's writing. I'm going to have to check out this graphic novel. So. Yeah, they're pretty good. <laughs> Enchanted is the first book in the Woodcutter Sisters series by Alethea Conscious. And this story blends together well-known fairy tales in a new way to create fresh new characters and a uniquely magical world. And this first story tells the story of Sunday, the youngest of seven sisters, whose special gift is telling stories that come true. And Sunday befriends a talking frog who actually turns out to be a prince. So now that you've heard some of our favorite fairy tale retellings, make sure you tell us yours in the comments below. So you've heard about our books set in a fantasy world. Now learn about a game where you can be 
your own fantasy character. Are you bored? Have nothing to do but stare at screens till your eyes fall out? Television is so boring. And I've already played all of these games. Isn't there anything else to do? Why not try something new with Dungeons and Dragons? What's this? Dungeons and Dragons? What's that? Anything has to be better than this. With Dungeons and Dragons, you use your imagination to be anyone you want. Whoa. Step into a world like never before. Become a master of mysticism, a fearless fighter, or whatever your heart desires. Fight monsters. Form relationships. Experience a game that lets you make the choices and level up the playing field. Transportation to a fantasy realm not guaranteed. Please do not throw the player's handbook indoors. Alright, glad you all could make it. So let's start with everybody introducing their character. Uh, I'll go first. So, I would like to introduce everyone to my human wizard, the great and powerful Susan. She is all magic, all the time, and plus humans get a plus one on all their abilities and start off knowing an extra language, so I thought maybe that would help. Eleanor Nightbreeze is an elvish ranger. Is it elvish? Elven? Elvish? Yeah. But uh, as an elf, he gets a plus two to his dexterity, so that'll help with my longbow. And uh, he's a wood elf, so he gets a bonus to his wisdom, and that'll help with his spells. Not that he gets any spells till second level, but... I am Korok, half-orc fighter. Uh, basically, I just wanted someone who could hit hard, so half-orcs get a bonus to strength and constitution. Korok was a mercenary. His favorite weapon is an axe. There you go. Hi everybody, I'll be playing Yara Jadestone. Uh, she's gonna be a human rogue. I wanted to play something that was distracting and sneaky, so I thought what better than a rogue? Um, so she may not have a big strong axe or magic, but she's gonna have her wits and quick hands to keep her pockets full. Alright, nice. So if everybody has their sheets and dice ready, oh, yeah. let's go ahead and get started. yourselves in a dense primeval forest following a path to the nearest town. You've been traveling for several days searching for the hidden treasure in the goblin caves. Oh, treasure! Yeah. Awesome! I hope there's like a magic bow or something. Yeah, or like an axe. An axe that shoots fire. Yeah. Shh. Kai, the DM's talking. What's the DM? It's me, your dungeon master. I'm trying to describe your surroundings. Oh, oh sorry. Oops. All right, so the path has taken you through the southern regions and you've been traveling for several days. It's difficult to mark the passage of time as the trees blot out the sun and you're running low on rations. Oh, isn't there something to blow out to our Burger King out here? Mm. Drive the same character. Uh, isn't there something like a tavern out here? Oh, it's just endless forest. Wait. I'm, I'm an outlander. Can I do something with that? Uh, actually, yes. So, outlander is your background, which means it tells you what your character did before you became an adventurer. Uh, and sometimes that means you have special skills or traits, and in your case that means that as an outlander, you can forage for food for up to five people. Okay, cool. I'll do that. While he does that, I'd like to survey the area. You know, make sure we aren't going to get attacked in the night or anything. 
So, my background is charlatan, so can I just pretend to help? Okay, Shiloh, I'm gonna need you to roll perception, so roll a d20. D20? What do you said to die? Uh, is it this, this one? Left. Uh, got it. Okay. Uh, 13. Do I need to add anything to it? Yep. Are you proficient in, uh, perception? Uh, I got a dot next to it, if that's what you mean. And a plus three. Yep. So you're going to add three perception roll. So 16? Yep. Oh, um, but where's that coming from? Okay, so you plus one to your wisdom, and then you're proficient in uh, perception, so that adds plus two. Basically, proficiency means that you were trained in that skill, so all together that's going to be plus three, so your total 16. Cool. Um, so do I see anything? Nope. It's all clear. I'll go gather some wood for the fire, since, uh, you know, I've got an axe. Okay, so David's hunting and foraging. Shiloh and Alexandria are setting up camp. Tanner is gathering wood for the fire. Uh, actually, can I use my charlatan background to make it look like I'm healthy? Uh, not actually. Okay, okay. Uh, so what do you use to light your fire? Oh, I'll use my lighter. You don't have a lighter. Oh. So I have a spell called pre um, Prestidigitation. Uh, it says I can light or snuff out a candle, torch, or small campfire, amongst some other things. But how many times can I use that? That's a cantrip, so you can actually use that as many times as you want. It doesn't count as one of your spells for the day. Oh, okay. I want to use that then. Alright. So Eleanor takes first watch, because elves have dark vision up to 60 feet. Alright, bandits rush into the camp, and the first one is going to attack Eleanor. Surprise round! Oh! He swings with his axe, and I'm gonna roll a d20 and add his attack bonus. What's your AC, David? What's AC? Oh, uh, that stands for your armor class. Basically, it's what they have to roll to hit you. Unless they're wearing heavy armor, it's a number made from your dexterity bonus and the armor. Okay, so there's a base of 10. My um, chain shirt gives me a plus 3, and my dexterity bonus gives me a plus 2. So that would make 15. Alright, yep. So that first bandit misses. Yes! Okay, the second and third bandits are going to sneak into the camp to try and attack Tanner and Alexandria. And I'm going to give them both advantage and roll 2d20 and take the better of the rolls since they're sneaking up on you. Uh. Alright, looks like you're safe, Alexandria. They rolled a 6 and a 12, which is well under your AC. Yes! <laughs> Tanner, you're going to take a hit, so let's roll for damage. You're gonna take eight slashing damage. Ooh, that's over half my health. Gorg ah. doesn't like that. Since the surprise round is over now, I'm gonna take everyone's initiatives. So roll a d20 and add your dex bonus. Eh, yeah, I got a 13. 16. 10 here. I got a four, I'm dead. The bandit's got an eight, so Shiloh, you're up first. So one of my first level spells is Magic Missile. It says I can throw three darts that do 1d4 plus one damage each. Do I need a roll to see if they hit? No, Magic Missile automatically hits if they're within range. Awesome. I want to use them all on the bandit attacking Tanner since he got hit. Alright, roll it. Alright, two, a three, and a four plus one each. So that's 12 damage total. That is more than enough to take out the bandit. That means there's two remaining now. Sweet. Thanks. David, you're up. There's a bandit right in front of you. What do you do? I want to draw my bow and attack. Okay, but since he's right in front of you and that's a long-range weapon, you're going to take disadvantage. Man, 
All right, so I'm rolling two d20s, and I take the smaller one. Okay, that's a 16 and a five. So that's five. Yeah, that's a miss. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Oh. Ah. Alexandria, you're up. Yes. So as a rogue, I get extra sneak attack damage if I have advantage on the roll. How can I get that if I'm not sneaking up on someone? Ah, so if you put yourself on opposite side of uh, David's bandit, you can flank him and then you both get advantage on the attack. Okay, cool. So I do that. Let's roll 2d20. Awesome! A 10 and a 17. That's definitely a hit. Roll for damage. Okay, so my dagger does 1d4 damage, and I roll an extra damage dice for the sneak attack. That's a 2 and a 3, plus 3 for my dexterity. For a total of 8. That's enough to take that bandit down. Yes! Oh! 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 Tanner, it's your turn. Let's do this. I swing at him with my axe. And that's a 20. That's a critical hit. When you roll a 20 on a 20-sided die, you automatically hit, and you get to roll your damage dice twice. Awesome. So my battle axe does 1d8 damage, so let's roll that twice. I rolled an 8 and a 5 for damage, plus 3 for my strength, for a total of 16 damage. Slain. Yeah. <laughs> well, at least we didn't die. And now for the best part, looting! Yeah.